Okay, welcome back to my channel, Made Between the Pages. My name is Taylor, and today we're going to be doing the first uh, video in my series of end of the year videos. And this one's going to be the wrap up for my Retro Reads Booktube Challenge. challenge that I started on my channel just after I created my channel, actually. I think it was in the same month. So I created my channel in April, I think, or the end of uh, March this year, and then I created this challenge in April. What inspired me to create this challenge on my channel was that I read The Remnant Chronicles in March of this year. And for those of you who don't know, The Remnant Chronicles is a YA trilogy. And when I read the book, I was looking for something light, something quick, something easy, uh, and I kind of expected to have a typical YA experience with tropes. However, those three books are amazing. I still don't own them physically, which is an actual crime, but I adored all three of them, and I gave all three of them five stars, which is really, really rare for me. And after reading the series, I realized that maybe my preconceived notions of books, especially previously popular books, were keeping me from picking up some hidden gems, especially since a lot of us tend to not focus on backlist books as much and we focus more on new releases. I wanted to give myself a chance to focus on backlist books and also books that I wouldn't necessarily pick up, but were popular and there must be a reason why that was the case, right? So I wrote uh, 16 different book titles on d little slips of paper, and I put those pieces of paper in... <sighs> For those of you who've watched my recent videos, it's the damn poinsettia! <laughs> the mug is behind the poinsettia. Alright, we're gonna have to disturb her, so let's see how this goes. Oh. Ooh, look at that balancing skill. She's still in her home. All right. Uh, so, this mug uh, is where I put those 16 pieces of paper. And I have pulled out, I believe, six this year. Um, we'll go through each one that I pulled out, but there were a couple months. One month I got really, really sick and I didn't have time. To read it. There's another book that I still haven't finished, which we'll get to. You guys know what it is. It's been around my channel. Um, and then the most recent one I also haven't finished. So there were some months that I didn't get to complete this. So I still have quite a few in here. And uh, I'll be continuing this challenge on into next year. But I do want to give the opportunity to add some older books to this, some other books to this, instead of just the ones from this year. So in the comments down below, leave a um, recommendation for a book that you think I should put in here. The requirements are that it's before uh, 2015, it was published before 2015, so it's a more backlist book. And originally I wanted books that were popular on booktube, but we can go ahead and open it up to books that you think are underrated and haven't been talked about enough on booktube. So that way I can have the two different sides to that. I can have the super popular books to see what I personally think about them and see if I think they're worth the hype, as well as some underrated books that I think booktube should be talking about more. So if I kind of mix those two in here, I think that'd be a lot of fun. So go ahead and leave in the comments down below um, what you think I should add to this cup. I'll be sure to put a list in the description of all of the books that were in here, that I put in here, all 16. Um, but today, uh, in this video, we're just going to talk about the books that I've already pulled out and read. The first one that I pulled out in uh, April <laughs> was The Name of the Wind. Now, I was very excited to pick this up because, as a fantasy reader, this is kind of a quintessential fantasy that many people love, and I just hadn't picked it up before. However, <laughs> I still haven't finished it. We love that for me. Around the summertime, I just gave up on trying to finish it at a specific point, so it's just kind of like 
the the big elephant in the room on my channel at this point that I haven't finished The Name of the Wind, but I do very much plan to, and I do want to. Um, it's just something about that book, I read it at a glacial pace and I'm not sure why. So I got it from my library several times, I would read, you know, a small chunk of it, and then I'd have to return it before I could finish it. So I think at this point I'm about 50 to 60 percent through the book and I haven't gotten it out of the library for a little while so you know it'd be nice to polish that off before the end of the year and I do have like a good chunk of time off of work so I may see if I can get that done before the end of 2021 that would be really nice for my channel to kind of you know polish the first year off with that but we'll see uh, so, I can't give a review on this yet, but I do know that I really don't like Kvothe. He's just so full of himself. <laughs> but I am liking the world building and the magic system seems really interesting. So, I'll let you guys know when I finally finish this, um, but that's the first one that I pulled out of the cup. The second book I pulled was The Darkest Minds by Alexander Bracken. Now, this one, when I read it, just after I read it, I gave it three stars. But honestly, after reflection and just thinking about it through the process of, you know, making this video, I might drop it down to two. Um, when I read it, my thought process was that for the time that it was written, it was really good. And I could see why it was really popular on booktube. Uh, especially for the age group, you know, if I had read it at 15, 16, I think I really, really would have loved it. But because I'm reading it when I'm older, it doesn't really hold out. Um, it was just full of a bunch of plot holes and the magic system made no sense to me. Like, there's supposed to be all these kids with all these amazing powers of mind control and setting things on fire and level t levitating things, but when these kids get free of the confines that they're in without giving anything away but when they're actually free to use the powers and like make their own society they don't use the powers to make the society which makes absolutely zero sense to me um so things like that inconsistencies in the book really threw me off and i also really didn't like the main character like, I think we were supposed to see her as a character who started off very weak or not sure of herself and then was supposed to grow into this stronger character, but it was not a smooth process. Like, she was consistently a whiny brat throughout most of the book, and then at the end, suddenly, I remember there was this quote where, I don't remember the exact words, but she said something, like, to the bad guy along the lines of, like, if you do that, I'm going to kill you and your entire family and everyone you love. So, you know, watch out kind of thing. And I was like, huh? Like, this character has, has developed, shown no development towards that type of personality or attitude this whole time. So, I, I just, when I think about it, I think that I'm going to drop this down to a two star. Um, so, I could understand why people liked it, but it just didn't hold up. The next book I pulled out of the cup was An Ember in the Ashes. Now, this is the only one that I bought physically since I've read it, so I think that says something about this book. I really, really enjoyed this book. I gave it four stars. Um, just like the Remnant Chronicles when I first read it, this book has tropes, but really well done tropes. Um, I actually just recently talked about this book with my friend Tammy over on Tammy Tries to Read, and we were talking about how this book has like adult dark themes with the YA tropes, and those two are mixed really, really well. Um, she called it, Tammy called it, uh, Grim Dark Light, <laughs> which I really think should be a genre name, so I'm giving her credit for that, but I love it. Um, I would consider this that, at least what I'd read of it so far. And what I liked was how Saba Tahir didn't shy away from showing the reality of the situation. So one of our characters is a slave, and Saba Tahir was like, you want to read about Slavery, let me show you non -romanticized, a non-romanticized version of that. And I think that's important to see. Um, but also, that more grim, dark, or starkly realistic aspect is connected or combined with why tropes that are really fun. So there's like a moody, you know, um, love interest who 
can't decide if he's good or bad, you know, that kind of thing. And it's really fun to read that part of this book. So I really enjoyed it. I read this via audiobook the first time, but since I enjoyed it and since I love, I mean, if you've seen my hauls, I've already splurged about these, but I love these like floppy paperbacks. They're soft and matte, but still have shimmer. I love these editions. So I bought myself um, this one, A Torch Against the Night and A Reaper at the Gates in this edition. So I'll be reading it physically. And I'm actually going to be doing a um, buddy read with Lena over on the Sufficiently Advanced Lena uh, for A Torch Against the Night. And we're going to start that very soon. So I'll see what I think about the rest of the series. I genuinely don't know if I would have eventually pick this up. Like, it was on my TBR, but I needed a kick in the butt to actually pick it up. So, for that reason, I'm really happy that I made this series on my channel, because it was the kick in the ass I needed to actually pick this up, and I got a really good experience out of it, so... Yeah. The fourth book that I pulled out of the jar was Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. Now, in my video where I introduced this series, which I will be sure to link here and, and down below so you can see my initial thoughts when I created this series, but when I made that video, that original video, I did say that I'm not a YA contemporary reader, I'm just not. Um, it's not a genre that pulls me in. So I wanted to put this and a couple other YA contemporaries that were popular specifically because I wouldn't pick them up otherwise. And that was the case for Simon. I know that I would not have gone for this book if I hadn't pulled it out of the cup. This was another situation that I was really happy I created this series uh, because I ended up giving this book four stars. I really enjoyed the character work here, and Simon is just a cinnamon bun and needs to be protected at all costs. And I just loved the friendships and the, you know, character work that Becky Albertelli did. Albertelli? Albertelli? You know who I'm talking about. The author <laughs> that she did in this book, and I felt really connected to everyone. So that's saying a lot considering that it's a genre I don't care for. So I'm really happy that I picked this one up in the end. I can really see why this was a booktube baby and still kind of is a booktube baby and why people love it so much because it does tackle a lot of big issues in the LGBTQ plus community and it does it really well. So, yeah. The fifth book that I picked out was uh, Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. Now again, in the original video, I do preface this choice by saying I know many people don't like it. It's snowing! What? It never snows in Fukuoka! Hold up! I have to ride my bike to work. That's gonna be fun. <laughs> oh my god, it's really snowing. shit. <laughs> anyway, now that I'm done acting like a little child <laughs> with the first snowfall of the year, so excited. Um, but, what was I saying? Right, Red Queen. So, Red Queen, I did preface this by saying that I know people really hate on this book. They dunk on this book all the time because it, it seems to have taken, like, all of the tropes that were popular at the time, like with the Hunger Games and, and um, Divergent and stuff, and just kind of taken all of those and squashed them together in one book, and uh, that element was definitely there. <laughs> um, I didn't hate this book when I read it. Uh, it was a, kind of a fun, fluffy read, but the level of not like other girls syndrome that this book suffered from was just... wow, wow, wow. Like, it was, it was really bad <laughs> in that regard. Um, usually I don't mind, like, the light version of that trope, but this was really heavy-handed. So that aspect of it really colored my, my enjoyment of the book the entire time. And really, my final like thoughts on this book are just, I don't really remember it. Like, I don't remember the characters' names. I don't remember like what the dystopian society was called or who was fighting who. I just remember little snippets of it. And so for me, it wasn't that I hated it, but it was just that it wasn't anything unique or special. Um, and I just kind of it's faded into the background for me, so it's pretty forgettable. So in that regard, I ended up giving this book two stars just because I felt like I'd read it a million times before.
Book number six that I pulled out, and the most recent one that I have in a wrap-up, I believe it's my October wrap-up, was Obsidian. Look, this is the first book in the Lux series. And if you just look at the covers, it's like, oh, I know this is trash. <laughs> Again, when I put this into the cup, I prefaced it by saying I know that this is basically trash, <laughs> but it's trash that people really seem to love and enjoy. So it's like that good trash. So I went into it with that expectation and it nailed it. It was so good. <laughs> I really enjoyed this book. Um, it does have, you know, the moody, paranormal, you know, love interest and all of that, so it hits all those tropes. But what I really enjoyed was that while those tropes were there, the author, Jennifer L. Armentrout, played with them. So the main character is pretty meta, so she reads books and does like a, a blog as, as a, you know, inside the story. And she likes to read trashy romance novels. And there are comments that she makes about the books that she is reading that are definitely commentary on the book itself. <laughs> so it's pretty meta, but the author is clearly aware of the story that she's writing, and she pokes fun at it through her characters. And I really enjoyed that aspect of it. It's like a very self-aware book, and it, it knows what it is. And that makes it a lot more enjoyable to experience, I think. So this was like book candy for me. I was in the mood for something like this, and so I had it on my phone, and I could not put it down. I read it constantly until, like, it was finished. So when I was waiting in line, when I, you know, was at a stoplight, whatever, I was reading it. Stoplight on my bike, not on the car. Guys, don't use your phone in the car. <laughs> Disclaimer, kids, all right? <laughs> but I was reading it nonstop. And when I finally finished it, I went immediately into the second book, which is Onyx, I think. And I did also finish that book. Um, so I gave the first book, Obsidian, four stars. I gave Onyx four stars, but I'm thinking I might drop that down to three because it wasn't as enjoyable as the first book. But I am interested to continue with the series. There are two more. And uh, I can see why this was a favorite because it's addicting. And like I said, it's aware of what it is. So... It feels a little less cringy, you know, to read it, so, uh, yeah, I really, really liked it. And I would recommend this to people who are in the mood for a trashy read. The last one that I pulled out of the cup was Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I pulled this out in November, and I just filmed my November wrap-up. But you might notice that this book is suspiciously missing from that wrap-up, because I didn't get to it. I'm in the process of starting a new restaurant here with my husband, and I kind of have to like pick and choose what I read with my spare time pretty, pretty, what's the word I'm looking for? Specifically, that's not it. Harshly, maybe? So I have to pick stuff that I know I really want to spend my time reading. So uh, this past month I read four books and you'll see them in my wrap up, but I didn't get to Miss Peregrine's. And I do want to read it, but I've heard from a lot of people that the audiobook is not the way to go with this. And I don't have access to it at my library here. I also know that it's very picture based, so I want to have like a physical copy. Maybe a digital copy would work as well, so I'll see if I get, can get my hands on a digital copy through my library. But, you know, my usual go-to for this series is audiobook, uh, because I don't necessarily want to go purchase the books until I know that I love them. So, we'll see how I can get my hands on it. But I do plan to read it, because I don't want to back out, you know, of this challenge. Because I haven't finished Miss Peregrine's Home or uh, The Name of the Wind, I didn't add anything else to my December TBR. I didn't make a TBR video, but um, just like the TBR I have in my head, I decided not to pull anything out of the cup this month. So we'll see if I can finish either one of those this month and kind of round out the year that way. But I am really excited to uh, restart this series uh, fresh in the new year. So please, please, please down below, uh, leave a comment with something you'd like me to add to the cup, be it either something you think is underrated before 2015, right? So backlisting, or uh, something that uh, is really popular on booktube and isn't in the list in the description, and you think that I should give a shot. But for now, I'm gonna head out. Jenny.